Hello and welcome to episode 3 of this Blender Crash Course. In this episode we're going to be doing UV unwrapping and texturing. So UV unwrapping is something you have to do before you can paint something, uh, or texture it, whatever, whatever you want to call it. So uh, the first thing I'll talk about is these options up here. What these are are just different layouts, so uh, it, it will actually switch the mode you're in as well. So if I click modeling, it'll change me right into edit mode right away. Uh, sculpting, we'll go right into sculpt mode. I won't discuss this one just now, but UV editing, we go right into UV editing mode. Now, most default objects in Blender will already be UV unwrapped in some proper way. So we'll, uh, we'll redo this ourselves. Texture paint, same thing. If we had uh, an image on this, we could paint it. Shading, so this is just to actually uh, set up your material properly so we can make this metallic. Um, now, this material prop, these material properties won't actually transfer into Unity, but we can use the same type of principles and make one ourselves in Unity later. So this is also a good way to actually preview what your object is going to look like or something like it. Uh, Blender by default uses the EV rendering engine. If you were creating a CGI movie or something like that, you could use Cycles, which is a little bit more... Uh, I always change this to GPU compute, so it uses your graphics card and runs a little bit faster. Cycles is a lot uh, more intense, um, more realistic. I just use EV because it resembles game objects and game engines uh, pretty good. So, that being said, let's go back to layout. Now, uh, having said all that, you can go into modeling, and you can still change what, what mode you're in. Control tab. We can go to object mode here while we're while we're in modeling. That's fine. We can be in sculpting. We can go to edit mode, and I can edit this in the sculpt window. Uh, same thing. We can go to UV editing, and because yeah, this is for UV unwrapping. We get this nice window over here to show that our UV island and our texture. Uh, but that doesn't mean I can't do everything else that I can usually do. This is the same viewport as this one right here. So just to note that none of these actually kind of lock you into doing a certain thing. Like I can, whoops, I can go into edit mode right here and shading if I want. I can change the shape of my model and do whatever I want. Just to note that. So for me, grasping the concept of UV unwrapping the best way was uh, to imagine that this object is made out of paper. I got that analogy from uh, Andrew Price, also known as Blender Guru. I highly recommend you checking out all of his content. So imagining this is made out of paper, and we go to our UV editing tab here, I'm going to select press A to select the whole cube and we can see that it's actually cut up, uh, kind of um, kind of cut in certain areas and then spread out. So if we want to make cuts ourselves, let's let's go ahead and delete this object. So go into object mode, right, you hit tab to switch back and forth in any, any of these different windows here. Hit X, oh sorry, in object mode, hit X after selecting the cube, delete it, shift A and let's add a UV sphere, right, so we'll be able to see this a little bit better. So the default unwrap of this is a little wonky. Let's say, let's hold Alt and click this here. You'll have to go to the other side and hold Alt. Now, if you don't know if you have the one directly across, you can hit 7 to go to the top. Uh, so to cut a scene here, uh, without actually separating, without actually cutting the object open, we can hit Control e and this is our edge options. So right down here, where it says Mark Seam and Clear Seam, we're going to mark a scene. That's going to draw a red line across our selection. You can deselect that, and it'll keep the red line there so that you know there's a cut there. Or at least we'll call them seams because it's not really a cut. So we'll A to, to select the whole thing. Now if we hit U to unwrap, press U, you get your UV mapping options. Press U to unwrap and just click unwrap and see what happens. So what that did was it gave us two basically flat circles. So it cut this right down the middle and it flattened out each circle. So we have one side is right here. This, uh, a lot of the select selection options and... Uh, Hotkeys will work in this in on these UV islands as well. Rotate, scale, uh, G, move. And what you're seeing here basically is this is going to be a projection of a, a 2D picture onto basically the coordinates of these islands that we designate. So we can place these in, in specific areas uh, depending on our texture. So th what we'll do next is actually get a texture. So uh, let's go back into object mode. We select that. Let's come over to shading and select this. Now what you'll get Oh, we deleted our cube, so the cube had a default material on it, and we can just click this arrow down here. This is the materials op, uh, tab, by the way, on your object. So click materials. We're just going to add one material to this, so let's just use the default one. That's fine. And we made it metallic for some reason. We can just set this back to default. I think that was 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 0. Okay. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to add a texture to this as a node. So this node, node base material here is we're going to be using it so that we can see what we're doing. Um, we're not going to be, be keeping a lot of this information. So, um, just like in any kind of viewport, you can hit Shift-A to add stuff. Now in this 
uh, shade import, it's actually going to be a lot of different stuff. So what we all we want to do is come down to texture, find image texture, and click. And that'll add an image node right here. So the next thing we want to do uh, is click open. And you know you can go to Google and download a picture, use anything you want. Uh, I'm just going to come over here and use a color palette that I've been using, using for a while. <clears throat> click that. And then take this little yellow dot and drag it, and you'll get a line coming off. So we just want to connect that to the base color. And there you have it. So now it is showing, projecting the image of where we place the islands on the picture. So we come back to UV editing, and we can see exactly what's going on now. This solid view, like I said before, won't actually show your texture. The material preview will, with no light influence. Right? Render will show rendered with light influence. So this is using the EV renderer. It's very fast and great to use. So uh, if we want to get rid of all these, this tessellation like it's a disco ball, again, just object mode, click shade smooth, and it'll, it'll smooth everything out. We could try cutting it the other way, which I think will be a little bit better. So you can just either select that line again or select the whole thing, where it's the only scene we have. Control E and clear that scene. So now there's no scene there anymore, but it will remain unwrapped. We can hit Alt and click this ring right here. Kind of make a uh, northern and southern hemisphere. So mark a seam across that. A to select the whole thing again. U, and we'll click Unwrap. Hopefully it uh, helps you understand the projection of what's going on. So now we can also just select say a couple faces. Let's do this and circle select, paint a couple of faces here. So I've got this right here. I can change the projection of this exact area and that area alone by moving this island by itself away from the other island. So now I have a third island over here. You can hover over these and press L to select them just like objects. All right, we can rotate this. So there are actually a few ways in Blender to project your image onto your object, but I strongly suggest you always use this method going into shading, making sure you have your material selected, using nodes, and adding a, uh, a texture image just like this and connecting them there because that way you know that they are uh, it's unwrapped properly for your game. And that's pretty much it for this one. So basically that is how you uh, you unwrap an object and get it ready for an image. So uh, as I said before, you couldn't see your texture on this solid uh, spot right here, but if you use a matte cap and any one you want, you can actually click um, this option down here, texture. right? And it'll show our texture draped over this. Now if you use a color, it'll add that hue, uh, kind of a tint to it, right? And there's the brown, the clay, the red clay. Yeah, it'll add a tint to it, but you can see your texture here. So if we just go back to something white and click texture, it'll show here. So that's pretty cool. But again, it will have no light influence because it's just a material preview. The same as this one right here that actually just uses our texture. So there's one more thing I want to show you how to do. It's um, uh, just like you can take a texture into Blender like this and use it as uh, on your material, you can create a fresh texture as well, a fresh picture. So we come into texture paint, UV editing, whatever you want. Either either one has this uh, this window here. So we're going to click this little new image button. It's two pieces of paper. This will be your pixel size, the default color. You can click this, raise the brightness up uh, to see which colors you're going to choose. It can be really anything. It's best to be uh, a shade of gray or white. Just set these to zero. Um, that's fine. So uh, this, this texture we used initially is actually very blurry. It's a 256 by 256. Now 1K uh, is usually pretty good for a game object, game asset. 2K is fine too, 4K, 8K gets a little out of control. Your texture size does make a big difference in the size of your game. Um, you can name your, your image here. I'm just going to call this uh, test texture. Okay, and when you click OK, it's going to give you your whole texture here. So now this texture doesn't really exist until we save it. So you can click here, image, and click save as. Just save it anywhere on your computer. Once you've done that, you can come into shading. We can change this to our test texture. Boom. Now it's all gray. If we come into texture paint, so here's the image we have currently. You can see our UV islands. We can go into edit mode and select the whole thing if we want to see where all of them are. Go back into uh, texture paint. You can see them here. So if I paint white on this, paints white there. We can also paint the object. Uh, for fun, I guess, I'll make the rollback, man. We'll try. Okay, one, front. Change the size of my brush by pressing F and clicking. Uh, we'll come down here to symmetry. These are all your options in texture paint. So this one up here with the tools, this is basically what mode you're in, what kind of tools you'll get. So I'm going to go X symmetry. And now uh, it should mirror this side with this side. If I just paint an eye, right? 
we'll mirror that when we come in. Mm -hmm. And just for fun, oh, we flatten them out like that too. All right, so now that we've gotten through these three episodes, um, we're going to start creating something in the next one, uh, getting a little bit more advanced and using a little bit more tools, figuring more stuff out. And that's it for this episode. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Uh, hope to see you in the next one. Bye.